Big thanks go out to Taiwa for supporting today's video via Patreon. Jadar vs Maelstrom Wanderer this time, and yeah, the Mana Crypt is going to help us compete against Maelstrom Wanderer, although I imagine they'll still outramp us. Probably going after the Skull Clamp again with the Diabolic Intent, because we're going to empty this hand quite quickly, I think. So it is a Swamp and a Mana Crypt on our turn 1, and that will, of course, take us into a turn 1 Jadar, which we really like to get down quickly in this deck. Uh, okay. And our opponent, well, I'm amazed to see a Maelstrom Wanderer player being scared of a Mana Crypt, but, well, there we are. Okay, trying again against Yarrick this time, and again we've got a turn 1 Commander, so we'll try that one. Uh, as much as I want to try Braids in this deck, I don't think with the Decayed tokens it's going to be all that good, so... Yeah, we'll have to hold on to the Black Market Connections, it's going to be more consistent card draw for us. We'll put the... <laughs> yep. Okay, third time's a charm. It's a different wedge this time at least. Uh, <laughs> again, we've got, you know, just for the fun of it, we've got another turn one Jadar here, so see if we go three for three on early scoops. Have to bolt down the Agadim the Undercrypt, and then the Rock lets us go in for the Jadar. And we're aiming for next turn. Might be a Pitiless Plunderer to make some mana, because Crypt Ghast isn't all that great when we don't have any swamps in play. Uh, but... As long as we keep the Mana Crypt, we'll hopefully go for a Fell Stinger next turn. If our opponent blows up our rock, it'll be catastrophic, but they get down a Tricycle land. Alright, and we do make a land, so it's a Swamp as well, which is double mana with the Crypt Ghast. I think it's still better to set up the Pitiless Plunderer, though, and we can start ramping. Even without a Sack Outlet, the Decayed Zombies obviously sacrifice themselves into a Pitiless Plunderer. So, at the end of the turn... We will get another zombie token and a treasure token from a creature dying to the Pitiless Plunderer. Now there's a rest in peace for us, which switches off the... Is this worded as dying? Yes, it is, so... Yeah, rest in peace gets rid of that. Alright, there's a demonic tutor, so we could go after some enchantment removal. And I think that's probably a good idea, because we do need to be seeing... Dying triggers in this deck with the Aristocrat effects and stuff. It switches off a lot of stuff in our deck here, including this fast pitiless plunderer. So let's go for feed the swarm. Thankfully, mono black can deal with enchantments now, and we'll lose two life to that. So blowing up the enchantment, and we can continue to make treasure tokens when we swing in here. Okay, yep, yeah, and there's another one. I did have a comment recently. Uh, some people. From that salt video I released late last week, said, or the week before, I can't remember when it was, said that they want to see older commanders, but they also, some of you want me to play older commanders, but you also don't want me to hold back my plays and uh, be as cutthroat as possible in some of my games. So, I mean, hey, we're seeing here why I don't do that. But here it is for those of you who are asking for it. I hope you're true to your word and you're watching this. All right, it's not a turn one Jadar this time, but we can get one out on turn two and jet medallion some decent ramp into a crypt gas a yeah too few a number of swamps for the crypt gas really but we've got x number of draws to make up against Frey Elise this time which is probably a pretty bad matchup for us which probably means our opponent plays it out players will play a full game when they're winning of course a utopia sprawl so some turn one ramp onto the snow covered forest all right and there's a bit of blossom for us so uh, hmm. yeah, I think we still go for the commander because it's two damage that we can be swinging in with as opposed to one evasive creature. And there's nothing to stop us going for Jet Medallion into Bitter Blossom next turn. Really do need to be seeing some black mana though. Seeing a deserted temple from our opponent. And into a Voyaging Satyr. Okay, there is a Champion of the Perished. So, yeah, I think we do concentrate on the Bitter Blossom. Let's swing in first. Highly doubt our opponent's going to get rid of the Sator, but we can try our luck. We'll at least get two damage on them. And then it's High Market, which will be our only sack outlet at the moment. And we can only sacrifice something with that once a turn, of course. But the Jet Medallion hits play for a one-mana Bitter Blossom, ready to start making fairies. Hopefully for the rest of the game. Although the Frey Elise can blow up artifacts and enchantments. And we'll likely see the Commander next turn. They've got a land that taps for two colours and... Voyaging Satyr can obviously untap that. 
Alright, instead going for a Lightning Greave, so setting themselves up. And they do have a mana floating here. Throwing out a Fable Passage will come into play tapped. But they can still untap the two mana land of course. So they do that here, three mana available. And that takes them into a Mana Vault. So could just slam down their commander here, it looks like that's what they're going for. And there's Freya Elise, Lanawar's Fury. Creating an Elf Token, so... Yeah, we want to be getting in towards the Freya Elise with a lot of damage as soon as possible really, but... Against all these little druids, I... Yeah, I don't see it happening. Maybe we can... Do something with these Bitter Blossom tokens eventually. Okay, a Reanimate. Might be useful later on in the game, but... Can't see it doing much now. So maybe we just go for the Woe Strider here so that we can actually try and get into some lands. Argument to be made for the Crypt Gas so that we can get double black off the Swamp, but... Yeah, I'm fine going for some Scry effects, get some value out of these Decayed Zombies. So swing through at the Freya Lease. And see if they want to lose out on some mana. Deciding to take the hit to Frey Elise means that they can't minus down and blow something up without losing their commander. Decay trigger on the stack means we sacrifice with the Woe Strider to get a scry. Alright, there's a pitiless plunderer which we could cast next turn to start making treasures, so if we can't get into lands that's the next best thing. Another elf druid by the Frey Elise going back up to 5 loyalty. <laughs> Alright, and a guy's cradle now as well. Lightning Greaves goes on to the Summoning Sick Druid, so they can tap those down for mana. Three cards in hand, they've got a lot of mana available. Obviously have the ability to untap the guy's cradle as well. And then the Deserted Temple is going to swallow up one of those pieces of mana to untap the guy's cradle. They untap it again with the Voyaging Satyr. So it might have to go for a Demolition Field, unfortunately, although the damage might be done. Floating a lot of mana... There's an invasive species. Uh, return another permanent you control to the owner's hand. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3 mana. And they bounce the guy's cradle because they can obviously see the demolition field here. And now a survival of the fittest. They've only got one mystery card in hand. But they're able to discard yeah, the Bane of Progress. So they did still have one creature. So maybe a Regal Force they go for here to refill their hand. And yeah, that's exactly what they aim for. Bumps them up to 6 cards in hand. So it's just a case of trying to survive at this point. Obviously draw into the Pitiless Plunderer. So, uh, yeah, we could hold up the Demolition Field here to go after the guy's cradle when they play it, but I think we've already lost at this point, so... Get down the Pitiless Plunderer, and... Yeah, we should swing in towards the Frey Elise, really. Uh, there's not much point doing it with any creatures other than the Fairy, so... No reaches, our opponent will take one damage to their Planeswalker. Uh, and do we just get down the Crypt Gas next turn, I suppose? If we're putting a Swamp on top of the Library, then we'd still be able to get down Grave Titan next turn. So, yeah, get rid of the Goat Token. Makes a Treasure Token, and of course there's a Swamp on top ready for us. A little bit too late, but get rid of the Decayed Zombie, which will be replaced at the end of the turn. And we'll sacrifice the Tapped Fairy. So then that allows us into the Crypt Ghast. And we should be able to get down the Grave Titan next turn, I hope. And we'll see how much our opponent can abuse these guys' cradle shenanigans here. Alright, throwing down a Vesuva as a Demolition Field. Um, they can't blow up our Swamp with that. Do untap it, because the Vesuva comes in untapped. And it looks like they are just blowing up, yeah. So they're really worried about losing the guys' cradle. Um, I don't think... They particularly need to worry about that, to be honest. They do shuffle our library for us. We get a swamp regardless. So we don't know what's on top of our library now. We could sacrifice some stuff to maybe have a look at that with Woe Strider. But we've got the mana for the Grave Titan now, regardless. Untapping the two mana land. Five mana available. Alright, now going after Minusing on the Freya Lease. So this is where we would have liked that Fairy Token. So probably sacrificing the Decayed Zombie so that we can try and get into some mana off the top. And then we can go for that Grave Titan. Even when we get down the Grave Titan, it's not going to do too much of anything for us, unfortunately. Do have a reanimate for it, fortunately for us. Discarding the Deep Forest Hermit to tutor again with the survival of the fittest. And with four mana available, they go for a Thorn Mammoth, which is likely going to wipe our board, I would think. 
deciding to just hold back a bunch of blockers so wall strider might as well sacrifice it here the decayed zombie isn't going to do anything make a treasure token and scry one all right necropotence is not terrible i mean we can't necropotence is going to be too slow but yeah we keep it it's probably our best bet so we've got a fairy with summoning sickness and one without we will go in at the Freya Elise again and put it down to one loyalty. And we're just aiming for a Necropotence for some kind of board wipe, I would think. Our opponent's likely going to go for Thor Mammoth shenanigans next turn, so we just sacrifice everything in response. And, of course, I forgot about the double mana, so I've tapped down too much mana here. Hopefully we don't get into an instant that will actually be relevant. Um, yeah, we might as well extort our opponent here. And Champion of the Perished is just going to die, but it's a blocker. They might not be able to get too many creatures into the Thor Mammoth. I mean, they've got six cards in hand, so they probably have at least a couple of creatures in that. But we've got the floating mana, so might as well go for Champion of the Perished as well. And then don't want to forget the Necropotence. That would be pretty bad for us. And I think we just go crazy on the Necropotence here, because unless they've got a Crater Hoof or something, I don't think our opponent's got us next turn, so... Probably put like 10 life into this and try and get into something relevant. We just have to combo off at this point. I'll actually put 15 into Necropotence. It gives us better odds of getting into something that's good. So that knocks us down to 23. And we just pray there's no overrun effect at this point. Do get a Decayed Zombie of course. So that will put a plus counter on Champion of the Perished. We can't discard with a full hand the Grave Titan to reanimate it, unfortunately, because Necropotence will have us exile. Uh, yeah, okay, finally, getting into the lands, though. And glad I went for 15, because it took us that much to get into a Damnation. Yeah, the additional mana was relevant if we want to go for a costly plunder. Um, Alright, plus counter, and we'll go through to the discard phase. Not whether they reanimate, could be useful against the... Deep Forest Hermit, we could get that into play and get a bunch of uh, Aristocrat stuff on the go. Uh, yeah, just I don't think the Grave Titan is going to do anything here. We'll have to discard that. Let's see here, get rid of the Plunder. The Simulacrum is going to be too slow. Yeah, the Mox helps us catch up, but we'll have to get rid of that as well. And I think the Reassembling Skeleton is even going to be slow as well, so get rid of that as well. Yeah, it would have been nice to keep hold of the skeleton. Like I said, I should have gone for the Deadly Relic before now, but all those things getting exiled. It's not worthy that the triggers do go on the stack, so if we can reanimate something at instant speed, like we could with the reassembling skeleton, then we can put it in the bin and reanimate it before the Necropotence resolves. So that's something to bear in mind. We can go after Thor Mammoth with the Deadly Relic as well, which is obviously... Yeah, that was obviously my thought process here, so it was probably worth keeping it in hand. Uh, the Wall Strider losing our sack outlet doesn't feel good, so uh, let's sacrifice. Does it even matter? Because we're not drawing a card next turn, thanks to the Necropotence, but we can put something relevant, or something that isn't relevant, on the bottom, maybe. Maybe plan on drawing into something, Swamp? If we put a load more life into Necropotence, I'm sure that we'll draw into a swamp, so I'll bottom that. And then, yeah, I'm just going to have to forego the Woe Strider here, I think. Might as well gain a life with the High Market. So the Pitiless Plunderer doing some work for us here. I'm assuming our opponent's going to go for a creature, so we wait for Thor Mammoth. What are you going to target here? Yeah, going after our Mana Doubler, so... We'll have to go for the Thor Mammoth now. Not going to extort my opponent. It might be that the Necropotence allowed us back into this one. I was hoping our opponent would cast a creature into the Thor Mammoth, hoping that they would um, be able to get something going there, but obviously just decided to plus on the Frey Elise instead. Guys, Cradle has hit play and they've untapped it once. And there we see a Seedborn Muse. Uh, not sure what they're planning to do at instant speed. It will untap their Mana Vault at least. Now untapping the Gaia's Cradle again with the Deserted Temple. And now discarding Uvermold Hydra to the survival of the fittest for another tutor. Won't be surprised to see a Rex Sage here or something like that for the Necropotence. No, it is an Apex Altar Source, so more fight shenanigans. 
So it's looking like we're going for the Damnation next turn, which unfortunately will leave the Freya Lease in play. Really getting hammered by this guy's cradle. If we had the Sack Outlet in play, obviously we could play into the Pitiless Plunderer. Uh, I imagine Pitiless Plunderer is their next target here, so we don't make as many treasure tokens. Managed to get rid of our Mana Doubler. Okay, no, going after the Champion of the Perished for some reason. So we do get another treasure. Okay, now going for the Pirate. So there's five damage markers on this thing. They will be able to do a one-sided board wipe thanks to all of the um, all of the toughness on that thing. Our opponent is near enough tapped out at least. Obviously they'll tap out during our turn with the Seaborn Muse, but I'm hoping that that won't be all that useful to them. Swinging in at us for five, six, seven, and eight damage, which is relevant with the Necropotence in play. Let me lose another life to the Bitter Blossom. Obviously not going to draw a card thanks to the Necropotence. So we'll go for a Sol Ring, and then that can be a Damnation, wiping our opponent's board hopefully. Could have Heroic Intervention or something. Okay, thankfully managing to wipe the board there. So then how's about we go for our Commander. Our Commander managing to hit play and then we can go for Reanimate on to the Pitiless Plunderer. Seeing as how we're still struggling for mana, especially against our opponent. And like we saw in the last game, that could be part of a combo piece. Uh, right, we're down to 11, so let's just put 5 life into the Necropotence to refill our hand. And hopefully Zulaport Cutthroat will do some work for us. Do have to bear in mind that our opponent has a Lightning Greaves in place, so could just whack us out of nowhere, but that's the problem with the Necropotence. You don't really have a choice once you get into the late game and your life total gets really low. So we go down to 6, we'll lose a life to Bitter Blossom, could lose some life to an opponent's creature thanks to the haste. Alright, and there is a Feed the Swarm, bit too late against the Survival of the Fittest. Uh, Yorgmoth is more life loss, but yeah, we can draw some more cards from that at least. Could ramp ahead a little bit with the Phyrexian Tower next turn if we feel as though we have to do that. Getting the Dorothy Voidwalker with Shadow into play last turn would have been nice, because... Obviously could have swung in at the Freya Lease fairly unhampered there, but we haven't done the best on mana. Only 6 mana by turn 7 means we haven't ramped at all. Uh, Manacing down on the Freya Lease gets rid of the Necropotence, I mean the damage is done with that, so... Yeah, that means that we draw a card next turn, I'm happy about that. Gaia's Cradle has been switched off thanks to uh, having no creatures in play. It has, until recently anyway, a Woodland Bellower for our opponent, and that could be a Rex Sage as well. Instead it is a Fierce Empath, so are we able to get something big into play here? And it is a Zapandrel that they decided to go after. That just doubles the power and toughness, it doesn't give any kind of evasion. The Woodland Bellower does not have Trample, so are they going to swing in here? I suppose they, yeah, they probably should. Which means we get rid of the Jadar, and that will give us a treasure token. We're just fighting an uphill battle here, as we have done all game. Okay, we draw into a Diabolic Intent. Is there anything we can do with that? We could set up the Gravecrawler combo, couldn't we? That's what we said we were aiming for last turn. So that means we need the zombie in place, so we sacrifice the Fairy to this. Need the zombie and the Pitiless Plunderer in play. And a treasure token is immediately made thanks to the token dying. Go for the Gravecrawler, because we do have a zombie in play. Play ourselves a Zulaport Cutthroat so that we've actually got a wink on. Uh, then we want Gravecrawler in play. And we want the additional mana from the Phyrexian Tower, I think. So play the Phyrexian Tower. Sacrifice the Gravecrawler to that because we can obviously play that from the bin. So that will make a treasure and it will drain our opponent with the Zulaport Cutthroat, which we're looking to do infinitely. And then Yorgmoth being in our hand is absolutely relevant here, so yeah, tap down the high market I think is safe. And we have to put a life into the Yorgmoth, but obviously Zulaport Cutthroat will gain us a life, so we're net neutral on the uh, life loss there. So then we use a treasure to play the Gravecrawler, and we should be able to go infinite here unless our opponent has an instant speed fight card, which he can't target this with because it has Shroud, so it'll have to be a buff and a fight. Not going to target anything with the Yorgmoth. We lose a life, Gravecrawler is sacrificed. 
drains our opponent with the Zulaport Cutthroat means that we gain the life back from the Yorgmoth straight away, thanks to the Zulaport. And we're even going to refill our hand while we do this as well. So against all the odds, we've managed to secure the victory here by the looks of it. I don't think we had any business winning this one, but this is why I often include combos in the deck, because, well, frankly, you need them sometimes. All right, and our opponent has sussed out that this is an infinite combo now and decides to scoop it up, so... Yeah, doing pretty well against all the odds there. Hopefully you all enjoyed this visit to an older commander in Jadar. And I will see you all in the next one. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.